Let's uh, head to the Payload Operations Integration Center um, at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Lori Meggs is there. And Lori, I understand we're talking about space station technology that's turned into a, uh, a fairly marvelous spinoff for us here on Earth. That's right, NeuroArm is a clinical research project where a robotic arm works hand in hand with brain surgeons. It works like the Canadarm robotic arm on the space station, although on a very much smaller scale. Now, Dr. Garnett Sutherland, he is a professor of neurosurgery at the University of Calgary, and he shares how this technology has become quite a game changer in the operating room. Project NeuroArm is, a, is the idea of translating uh, all the great research and development of space robotics into the operating room here on our planet. So we're talking so, about interoperable surgeries, right? Interoperable brain surgeries that are now... We're talking about brain surgery and we might use um, a statement that the outcome from brain surgery, while being great, can get better. And for us to make it better, that probably does require collaborative efforts between science, engineering, and medicine. And one philosophy we had is, would it not be wonderful if one could merge diagnosis with therapy? Um, that would require advanced interoperative imaging and to put machine technology into the imaging technologies so that you can conduct operations while you're taking the pictures. Wow. So that would allow surgeons to do things they currently can't do, and that would allow surgeons to always know the effect of what they're doing as they're doing it. So how has this all come together? How, how mm. did the neurosurgery so, world meet up with the robotics world? So many years ago, we began a project on building an interoperative MRI device. And so we built one, and we put it on the ceiling of an operating room, and it can come in and out as the surgeon wants. But that interrupts surgery during imaging. So I remember around 2002, I phoned a company called McDonald Detwaller Associates, the, the company that built Space Arm and the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, and said to them, you know, you people build complex robots for complex space places, and I would like to uh, join a project where we build a robot for that magnet that we can put inside the magnet and it can conduct neurosurgery inside the bore of a MR machine. So that project began around 2002, and the robot was delivered in about 2008, and we redid the interoperative MRI project around 2010, and now we're using the robot for clinical cases. Tell me how the MRI is involved with that. If you have a neurosurgical problem or neurological problem, you will commonly go see your doctor, and your doctor will send you for an MRI. An MRI allows your physicians to see inside your body, specifically your head. So we can see your brain, and we can see the problem that's affecting your brain. Uh, furthermore, the MRI gives even more information, like where are the important areas in your brain that need to be avoided, and it even can display the connections between the right and the left and between um, within the hemispheres of the brain. So we have this rich data set of everything we, uh, of your problem and its effect on your brain. Then you go see your neurosurgeon who tends to operate on you, knowledgeable of the images, but doesn't actually operate in the image. So the theme of this project is the person would be getting images, but then the robotic arms would enter the image and remove it while you're taking pictures of it. And that's the fundamental goal of the project. What does the robot look like? He looks like, he looks like a surgeon without a head. <laughs> <laughs> so the robot, the robot has two arms connected to a base. And the robot's arms are much like a human's arms. And they have joints, much like a human's hands have joints and the surgeon controls that larger robot using hand controllers, which are really miniature robots. So however the surgeon moves their hand, the robot moves. So the robot is slave to the motions of a human surgeon.
So then our patients come to the hospital, they see us in our clinics, and we schedule them for surgery, and we tell them uh, that we're going to use the robot for part of your operation, and we believe the robot is a benefit for your operation. And it, invariably, people want the robot used. In <laughs> fact, you can sometimes see a little, not a tear, but a disappointment should you say, no, we're not using the robot for your case, <laughs> type thing. And then we begin that process of showing how the robot benefits or doesn't benefit a surgical procedure. Let's talk about success stories. Tell us some. Mm. Well, our very first patient was a um, young woman with a complex brain tumor. Um, and she just had her child. So we took her tumor out of a small opening using the precision and accuracy of the machine, coupling it to the executive capacity of uh, the surgeon at a workstation and or the assistant surgeon. And we've had many more than her since. And we tend to use the robot at least once a week. What would have been her prognosis had you not been able to use that? Mm. So in these particular cases, her prognosis would have been pretty good using conventional surgical technique but we're trying to show that with machines and surgeons, we will always deliver an excellent outcome. So that might say, I would like the bar to be raised. <laughs> and the other thing about machines, like a robot in an operating room, is all the data is digital. So everything is recorded. So people can play back <laughs> and learn from that procedure. And in theory, they can play forward, which is one of the goals of the project, to feed your MR machine, your MR imaging data into the robot's workstation and practice your surgery before you actually do it. So is it also being used to train surgeons? Yeah, so this is a platform which we would expect to be an ideal training platform for surgery, uh, much like a pilot will use will go somewhere into a virtual pilot, At the simulator. virtual airplane simulator. Um, robotic surgery offers the potential of simulation um, for the young trainees of surgery. And those are just the earth applications. The commercial production of these units is now much smaller and lighter and could be carried back to space to use on long-term missions.